For this tutorial, I'll be showing you how you can attach something to your character. For my example, I'll be using a hat or to be more specific, a beanie that I'm going to attach to this custom metahuman. In Unreal, there's many different ways of doing things and I'll just be showing you three different techniques that you can choose from. The first technique is going to be more of a permanent solution. So I'm going to be attaching the hat to her and it will just kind of permanently be there. And then the two other solutions will be more shot based. So if you need to have something turn on or off for a specific scene. Let's get started with technique one, which is just a very simple way of attaching something sort of more permanently to your character. So in your content browser, go and find the static mesh of the object that you're looking to attach. In my case, I'm going to attach the beanie. So I'm selecting the static mesh of the beanie. Then I'll move over to the world outliner and to my character. And I want to open up the blueprint of my metahuman. If I go to my viewport, I can see the fully assembled metahuman. Next, I'm going to add the hat as a component to the hierarchy. So under add component, I'm going to search for static mesh. And since I already selected the object in the content browser, it actually knows that I want to open this up. Only thing is it adds it to the very bottom. So I'm going to click and drag it over to the face since it is a hat and I want to attach it to the head. Over on the right side, you can see the hat is now added in the static mesh field. Above that, we have the parent socket. So I still need to attach the hat to the skeleton so it moves correctly with animation. So I'm going to attach it to the head bone. Now in technique three, I'll be showing you how you can make a custom socket. But for this example, I'm just going to use what's already there. Now the hat is in the wrong place. So it's attached to the head bone, but it's not facing the right way. So I just need to adjust the transforms. That looks pretty good. I'm going to check all angles. It looks kind of huge. I'm going to just scale it down a little bit. Okay, that's not bad. So once you have the object positioned correctly, you can go ahead and compile. Now, one thing to note, though, is that she has pretty short hair. Obviously, you have to be careful of, you know, hair penetrating. One thing you could do in some cases is select the hair and just literally delete it if it's kind of always hidden underneath, you know, the hat. But she has short hair, so I don't need to do that. So it's a compiled. I'm going to close this. And now if I look in my viewport, she is wearing a hat, so if I select her and I move her around, the hat is moving nicely with the body. I always like to double check that it is working correctly in a sequencer. So I'm going to open up an empty sequencer. I'm going to click and drag her into the sequencer. Now for this example, I don't need the control rig. I'm going to add an animation track. And I'm just looking for some kind of a walk cycle that I already had in my library. Yeah. And now you can see that the hat moves very nicely with the body. And the cool thing is that I can just keep adding her to any kind of a sequencer and to as many shots as I want. The hat will always be there. Technique two is a shop based solution very simple, just using an attach track inside sequencer. So you would have to do this for every shot where she's supposed to be using or wearing the hat. So first thing I'm going to create a new sequencer. So right click in content browser animation sequencer. And I'm going to go ahead and just click and drag my character into my sequencer. For this demo, we don't need to control rig. And now go ahead and find the object that you're looking to attach to your character. So here's the static mesh of my hat. I'm going to click and drag that into my sequencer. So next I want to attach the beanie to the character. So I'm going to go ahead and add an attach track, attach. And I suggest using new binding. There used to be a bug when selecting existing binding. So new binding, select your character. Now pick the component that makes most sense for what you're looking to attach to. So in my case, the face. 
And next again, I gotta select a bone. So since it's a hat, I'm gonna attach it to the head bone. And notice how it immediately jumps to the head bone location. Now, if you didn't already, I would suggest starting with the transforms zeroed out. And I already remember the numbers from the last technique, so I'm going to use the same settings. But this can be kind of a pain, as you might have already tried. You have to figure out exactly where it should be located so it looks right. And again, once you check all angles, and you're happy with it, you should be good to go. So if I select my character, the hat is moving with her, the body. But let's just run another animation test. So I'm going to add an animation track. Let me see. I'm just going to open up that walk cycle. And looks like it's working very nicely. So this technique is super simple, but it can be a pain because you do have to do it for every shot. And getting the transforms right the first time can take a little while. In technique one, we learned how the character could be wearing something throughout all of the shots and the whole project. And in technique two, we learned how the character could be wearing something in only one or maybe two shots. But what if the character is wearing something throughout multiple shots, but not all of them? In which case, it'd be kind of annoying to have to copy those transforms in the attach track every time. So this is where sockets come in. And creating a custom socket allows you to create uh, transforms that you can reuse, so to speak. Now, it depends on where you want to attach the object to. So again, if it was a weapon, you might be selecting the body. But since this is a hat, I'm selecting the face. And I'm going to open up the skeletal mesh. So the whole point is you want to get to the skeleton. Make sure you have your skeleton tree selected. And now you want to select the bone that you want to create the socket to. In my case, I'm going to create a custom socket on my head. So I'm going to right click on head and I'm going to select the add socket option. And notice how it jumps to the socket that it just created. Now, if you move over to the right side to your details window, once you've selected the socket, you get the parameters for the socket it just created. So the first thing I'm going to do is just rename it so I can find it very easily. So this is because this is what you're always going to be looking for in the sequence or wherever you need to access it. And it's again attached to the head bone. Now I need to add some transforms. So this is basically the transforms that I added in the attach track in technique two. But I can't see the, the hat, and I want to make sure it's placed in the right place. So it, there's a nice option. If you right click on the socket and you go to Add Preview Asset, now go and find the object that you're looking to attach. So here's my beanie. And boom, you can recognize that the begin, the, the start location again is the same as with the attach track. So once again, you want to change the transform so the hat sits correctly on the head. Now, I, from having done this twice, I already know what these numbers are. You would have to play around with a precise location. Oops. And scale this down again. And as always, you just kind of want to check that the hat is placed correctly. Looks pretty good. And once you like the location, you go ahead and save. I can close this window. Now notice how the beanie isn't showing up yet. So all we did was create a socket. Next, you'll want to create a new level sequencer. So right click, animation, level sequence. Let's name this shot one and I'm going to drag and drop my character into the sequencer and again for this demo I don't need the control rig go ahead and find the object that you're looking to attach so static mesh drag and drop the hat into the sequencer these steps are basically the same as in technique two that we did so I'm going to make an attach track new binding 
select your character, select a component that makes the most sense. So head to head, face. But now notice that the socket that we just created shows up in the list. And this is cool because this already has the transforms for the hat correctly in the parameter list. So I'm going to select the hat socket and boom, the hat automatically jumps to the correct um, location. So instead of having to manually figure out where is the hat in your viewport and then you know typing them in, it, every time you use the socket, it will know that the hat's supposed to be in that place. So it just saves you a lot of time. And let's say like the, a day passes and you've now moved on to shot 10. So again, once again, I open up my sequencer, same steps. Don't need this for the demo. Drag and drop, attach, new binding, character face. Ah, the socket is still there and the hat isn't the correct location. So now let's just test out an animation file, make sure it all working as expected. So again, different than technique two, where you had to create an attached track, but then manually in your viewport place, you know, the, the, the hat on the head and, and type in all your transforms and you would have to do that for every sequencer here you just create a socket that has the correct transforms and you can just reuse that socket every time you make a new shot which is pretty cool so i hope this tutorial was helpful and i'll see you guys next time